Hello and welcome everybody. It is Coach Action Jackson and I'm here today with my man Kelvin for another episode of Client Success Stories. So Kelvin, if I say most people crush the program, this guy knocked it out of the park. I told him the other day this is Justin Verlander Hall of Fame style stuff. So what he did was he lost over 40 pounds going from 224 all the way down to 183.5. His body fat went from 22% all the way down to 8.3, single digit body fat, losing 13.7%. He gained six pounds of muscle during a cut, and he also lost five and a half inches off his waist, going from a 38 inch waist down to a 32.5. Kelvin, you not just hit a home run, you knocked it clear out of the stadium. Congratulations. Obviously, I'm super proud of you. Why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, thank you. I appreciate it, Jackson. Um, yeah, like you said, my name is Kelvin. I'm 33 years old. I uh, have two kids, a wife. I'm a mortgage broker here in Michigan. So didn't always have the most time on my hands to, to put in the health and fitness and eating right all the time and decided to take a leap of faith and jump in with Jackson here and join the program. And um, the results are just way better than I honestly could have ever imagined. So I'm, I'm pretty pumped. Kelvin, obviously the results are amazing. We'll talk about all the good, amazing parts of that, but let's take it back a little bit. I like to start these off by talking about just the beginning of the journey. Where were you at before we started working together? What was that like? Give me everything from the physical, the mental, the emotional, just everything and anything that you want to share. For sure. Um, fitness for me, like I'd always done working out. Um, but it was more of like, I did a lot of cardio cause I thought that was like, Hey, here's what you should do. Um, this is how you should lose weight. I've always had a treadmill in the house. Uh, the biggest problem for me has always been not, not necessarily doing the working out and things like that. It was my eating habits. It was doing stuff on a regular schedule, sleeping habits, just kind of all of it kind of rolled into one. I was, you know, always trying different things with fitness, but never really focusing necessarily on the right things. So, you know, I, I kind of went through a like information overload phase where I didn't really know exactly where to start when it comes to looking at things like I didn't know what a macro was. I didn't know what, um, you know, how often I should be running or working out or lifting um, a couple of I think in the end of 2021, I got a tonal, which was a great, great investment. I did a lot of the programs for a year and saw some, definitely saw some muscle gain, lost a little bit of weight like I wanted to, but I still kind of plateaued. You know, I'd always kind of jumped around from program to program, you know, but never really focused on any one thing. I just kind of did whatever I felt like at the time. Like I said, I just kept plateauing wasn't really seeing at like anything, you know, wasn't losing weight like I wanted to, wasn't really putting muscle on like I wanted to. Um, I was kind of mixing up. I wasn't sure how to do, how often I should do cardio versus lifting and eating and, and all that stuff. So um, I took a chance and uh, I reached out to Jackson. I heard you did stuff on the side, not only just with your tonal coaching, but also with um, your fitness clients as well. I saw a lot of the results your clients had gotten, and uh, yeah, that's that's kind of where we started We uh, in December here of 2022. So Kelvin, it sounded like there was a, a lack of structure in what you were doing. It was a bit chaotic. You're jumping around a bit to different things, shiny object syndrome. Obviously, social media adds to that because there's so much information, so many people. It's information overload. You don't know who to believe, who to trust, what to do. Did you have awareness around that? Did you know like, hey, I'm lacking structure and I'm jumping around? Or did you, were you just looking for what the next thing that would actually work was? Like, just take me inside your head at that point. Did you know you had a problem? Did you think what you were doing was right? Like, what what was kind of going on? Yeah, when I first got my tonal, I thought for sure, I'm like, hey, I, I'm doing this. And I did see a, a, a good, a little bit of a decrease as far as like my weight's concerned. I could tell I was putting on a little bit of muscle. And I thought it was great because the programs are structured for you. They tell you exactly what to do. Here's what you do. So that part was going pretty good. Um, but I knew I had a big problem, I think, in two main areas. Number one, like 
mixing and cardio because I did like to run. Running's kind of like in a little bit of an escape for me. Like even though I've I've never I've been kind of chunky, it was like running. Just getting in three or four miles was always like, hey, I like to do this. I can zone out. I can watch TV. I can kind of like put my headphones in, blast some music, do whatever. I didn't really know how to mix those two together, and like so I would be running so much that I really wasn't getting good workouts in, or I was working out so intense that. I couldn't really get a, a run in, and that was kind of mixing things. And then the other area too that I knew I needed to improve on, but I had no, honestly, nowhere, no idea how to start with, was um, eating, my eating habits. And me and you talked extensively about this at the beginning of the program, and when we talked to each other, is I, I always referred to myself honestly as the pickiest eater in the world. I that's that's how I framed everything to Jackson. I told him, I said, hey. I said, I love that you come up with a custom meal plan, but I, what I don't want you to do is just tell me to eat more vegetables and be done with it. Like, I want you to actually like structure something personalized to me where I can kind of try to introduce some new things, but also realize some of my limitations. And you challenged me on that. You challenged me pretty, pretty big as far as like, hey, I get that. Like you, you do like people like what you like, but at the same time, we need to like, you need to change your mindset. You need to stop thinking of yourself as the pickiest eater of all time, because then you're never going to try anything new. You're never going to do anything new. And I kind of took that to heart. I was like, Hey, I think that that's right. And so, um, I knew there needed to be a change somewhere. I just didn't know how to go about it. And when you made like these custom meal plans for me and I started introducing more things like now, like for instance, I never really ate vegetables. Like I just did not like them. Like now I eat carrots for a snack every day. I eat broccoli with my meals. I eat green beans, corn, like all the stuff that I would eat maybe like once or twice a year. Like I'm eating every single day now and it's just made a huge, huge change. Fantastic. So let's talk about that for just a second and stay there since you mentioned the nutrition. I'm laughing because I remember our first conversation and number one, I knew I could definitely help you despite having limitations and restrictions. But I also knew that if you if you kind of have tunnel vision and you just are so focused on a certain identity, like an, an identity is I'm the picket seater of all time. An identity is I can't put on muscle mass. An identity is I can't get six pack abs. I can't lose weight. I only lose weight by running. These are identity statements that people carry about themselves sort of subconsciously or unknowingly. And if we label ourselves like that and hold on to those, that can prevent us from getting the goals that we want. And we could stay stuck forever sometimes in some cases with people because we wear these, these hats and because we, we identify a certain way. So we have to make our identity a little bit malleable. We have to reshape our identity a bit so that we can not completely change who we are, right? And, and still, of course, eat some of our favorite foods, but open things up just a bit to reshape things so now we can achieve our goals while still, of course, having some flexibility in the diet. So you now are eating some vegetables. You're still, you're, you're expanded the diet, which is great. But tell me, how difficult was it from a diet and a food perspective? Are you still able to eat some of your, your favorite foods? Like, do you like healthy, healthier food now? Do you enjoy it? Like, just take me on the journey of the ups and the downs from a dietary perspective that you experienced. Yeah, for sure. Um, especially at the beginning, like, and I, I give you tons of credit because you did come up with a custom meal plan and you told me, you're like, I think this is the first meal plan I put together without like hard lining vegetables, like in, into it. So I, I had know no vegetables in the first one. If you remember, I was like, yeah, <laughs> there's nothing. So it was, uh, but it was great. But then I, I realized like, um, you know, for the first couple phases, it wasn't too difficult because you're in that like excitement mode. You're just like, oh, I'm making this change. I'm seeing a lot of results. Like I'm, I'm like head, you know, head over heels, like ready to go, like crush this, crush this program. So like for the first four or five weeks, like, yeah, I could make it work. Like where I was, you know, limiting my calories, limiting my, um, you know, what I was eating and still sneak in maybe like a little bit of food that I like here and there. Um, I realized though, probably like halfway through the program, um, that that wasn't going to be the most successful long-term vision. Um, so that's when I really started trying to introduce like more foods and, you know, my wife, she credit her too, because she likes any, likes any vegetables. So she always like, honestly would make separate meals or we would make separate meals a lot of times because she'd want vegetables with hers. I used to be like a big pasta eater. Like now I 
now, honestly, like I really do enjoy some of this stuff. Like I'm still like, you know, a couple foods here and there, like, you know, broccoli. I don't think I'm ever going to be the guy that's eating like a giant bowl of broccoli all the time. But I will say like, I like it now as a side on my meal. I like asparagus now. I like green beans are, are like a huge hit. Um, we just had, uh, you know, corn, like everything like that, like salads, like I was never a person who ate a salad. I would eat a salad like once a year and I've had one every day for lunch this week. Like I have a chicken salad, like every day, like, and I actually enjoy it. I actually like it. And I can still like, uh, you know, you've always told us like, you don't have to be super restrictive. Like you, as, as long as you're keeping it as like a, you know, 80 to 90% of, you know, good foods. And then you have your own like 10 to 20% on different days and different weeks of like your quote unquote cheat or like the foods that you like. And I, I enjoy that because like this Saturday I went to a baseball game and afterwards me and my wife, we stopped at a, the best cookie shop in the entire world. And we grabbed some cookies and I had a cinnamon roll and I did not feel guilty about it because I was like, Hey, I know like how to actually eat now. I know how to like, you know, I know that my, my dinner is going to be a salad so I can be flexible here. I know that the next day, like, you know, there's just so many different options you can take without like punishing yourself or feeling bad or like anything like that. Or like, and that really helped me like my mindset because before, if I had a cookie or if I did something like that during a diet or when I was losing weight, I would just feel so bad about myself. And then it kind of spiraled out of control from there you know, then it went, it turned from one meal or one snack to a day to a week to a month now of like, I'm eating bad. And I just can't really get back on track. Whereas now I have the tools to be like, it doesn't matter. Like I had some cookies, like, so what, like, enjoy it, enjoy, enjoy those foods that you like still. And you just know how to like eat better and enjoy other things as well. So yeah. Wow. That was incredible. That was one of the best food rants I think I've ever heard. And it touched me really deep because of what you said about having guilt and shame around food and struggling and spiraling. These are things that so many people struggle with. I mean, it's just incredible how many people, and I mean, I've dealt with this myself too, when I was fitness modeling. So I had the whole thing that I was doing, but wanting to eat healthy, wanting to be on a plan, wanting to lose weight. And they feel like they have to be so perfect and so restricted, but then they can't manage it or maintain it. It's not it's not a, a long-term based approach. When they have that cookie, they break down, they feel so guilty, they feel shame, and that often causes them to then spiral and then have another cookie, another thing, a brownie, a whatever, and it just goes down from there. And now it's so liberating to finally have those shackles off and to be like, I'm gonna have a cookie and I could do it guilt-free because I planned on it and because I had that salad yesterday and I put in the work and then when you have it and you have it a little less frequently, number one, it tastes better. Number two, you can do it and it's not gonna affect your weight. You have no guilt, no shame, and then you immediately get right back on track and do what you're supposed to do. It's such an incredibly powerful mindset and it's such an incredibly powerful lifestyle shift to be able to do that because now you can have your favorite foods, you can get the results and you can have single digit body fat like you do. And it's just, it's incredible. It's so incredible. I'm so excited and happy for you. And I love that you shared that story about going to the game with your family because those are the things that people want to do, but then they don't know how to manage their food and their eating outside of that. So then that becomes a huge spiral and a drawdown and it didn't for you. So talk me about, talk to me a little bit about, is it mindset? Is it perspective? Is it identity? Like how is that shifted for you along the program to go from where you were as the pickiest eater of all time to now being somebody who at, in your own words, you've expanded your diet. You still can eat some of your favorite foods. You had a cookie guilt-free and now you're back on track. Like how does that shift from a mindset perspective or maybe an identity perspective? Yeah, I really resonated with the identity. You talk a lot about like, how's your, what's your identity? If you think of yourself as the pickiest eater in the world, you're going to be the pickiest eater in the world. That's just how you're going to like go about your life. And, you know, I didn't really know it because when I was a kid, like I tried these foods and I didn't like them, or maybe I had a bad experience with some of them and you just never go back to it or, you know, taste buds change. You know, that's, that's, um, my mother-in-law, that's her favorite saying always tell me is take your taste buds change when she's trying to get me to try new food. Um, and I really realized that, 
sometimes they do. And like, it, it just really has been a whole identity shift of like, I think of myself now as someone who's at least willing to try stuff like yesterday, I, again, like another food that I really don't really care for sometimes is fish. And my wife's been getting a lot of um, cod lately. And I realized because I had tried salmon before and I did not like salmon because it's very fishy tasty taste. I tried some of the cod she made the other day that she put in the air fryer. I actually liked it. I was like, wow, like I could actually see myself eating this. So like I'm slowly starting to realize like, hey, just go back, try the food. If you don't like it, you don't like it. Like it's it's okay. Like it's not the end of the world, but it's not going to hurt you to at least try. Um, and that's been that's been massive for me because like I, I think of myself now as like someone who you know, can eat healthy. I always thought like I could never eat healthy because I just didn't like vegetables or I didn't like, um, you know, certain foods. Like I was always like pasta, cereal, fruit snacks, like all that stuff. And I just like my healthy meal, I thought was like a ham and cheese sandwich. And I realized like after doing the program, I'm like, you can make that healthier, but that's, if that's the healthiest meal that you're eating, it's probably not not going to be long-term successful. So um, yeah, it's just been a huge identity shift for me and my attitude's been way more positive. My it hel It's helped out my wife a lot. Like when we plan out dinners and things like that, like it's a lot easier not to have to, one of us have to cook two, two different meals. Um, so it's just been great all, all around chain. Wow. That's incredible. A lot of people don't believe this about me when I, when I tell the story, but when I was a little kid, I was like seven, eight or nine years old. My mom wanted me to eat some green beans. And I was like, no, I'm not eating them because I hated vegetables, kind of like you. At this time, I, I was considered in my family the pickiest eater of all time, like out of the family. So she's like, put one green bean in your mashed potatoes and eat that, and then you can leave the dinner table. And I was so stubborn, I said, no, I'm not doing it. I'm not eating green beans. And I sat there for two hours until my mom gave up and just let me leave the table. And then I never ate another vegetable again until I was probably at least 25, I think. And it wasn't until I was probably at least 25 that I shifted and started to eat vegetables. And the way I did it was I started with actually cauliflower mashed potatoes. That was the first thing I started with. And I was like, okay, I know what I want to achieve long-term. I want obviously a really long, healthy, active life. I have a certain physique I want to achieve. I have certain goals you know, from a health and fitness perspective. And also I want to get into coaching at some point. So I probably should change what, the way I eat a little bit. And then make some improvements and adjustments. So I was like, growth mindset, what could I do that would make this easy? That was the first question I asked. And I said, okay, well, cauliflower mashed potatoes, that doesn't sound so bad, right? It's not a green vegetable, so I'm not getting too crazy. And it's like basically supposed to be like mashed potatoes. You put butter and salt and stuff in it. Like, so I made that and I was like, this isn't terrible. I could see myself doing this once in a while. So I started doing cauliflower mashed potatoes. And I was like, what if I tried and then it was the next thing. And I think the next thing I tried was like, oven roasted, you know, broccoli in, or something, because that's pretty good. It's kind of a little crunchy. It's got a little flavor to it as like the little char kind of. So I was like, started there with like sea salt. I was like, that's not terrible. And then it just kind of escalated from there. And now, I mean, I could literally crush a whole bowl of broccoli, no problem. But that was an evolution to that. It didn't happen overnight. I didn't go from no vegetables to broccoli every single day. There was a slow evolution and it shifted my mindset more and more and more and more in a much more positive way. Growth mindset, positive mindset. And I was able to shift and change my identity just like you were. So and I love that story. Yeah, I was just saying, I think that's a really good point. Like I was the same way. Like I was always afraid of like just trying it all at once. And then it was like, that's just too much at a time or like eating a whole meal of it. And then I just realized, like, just introduce it. And my thing was green beans. I liked canned green beans for whatever reason. And so I started eating green beans and corn with every meal. And then we started switching into, like, fresh green beans. And I was like, okay, I like this. And then it turned into, like, um, air fryer with maybe, like, a flavor god, like, flavor on broccoli or um, asparagus and, and, or, like, salt and pepper. So, like, it's been a it's been an evolution and I'm still evolving. It's never a finished you know, journey, but yeah, it, it's, it, it was very overwhelming to start off with. And once you kind of like take it into bite-sized little pieces, literally, um, no, I guess pun intended, but yeah, it, it really made a huge, it was a game changer. Well, that's call, kind of called exposure therapy, right? We expose you to it in small doses and your tolerance and, and things change and your taste buds change, of course, and you get better at it and stronger. It's progressive overload from a workout perspective. 
Why does the workout program that we create for you work so well? Well, we customize it, but we leverage progressive overload so that you're you're constantly exposed to a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, and we build upon that, and that gets you better, stronger, faster, your endurance higher, et cetera. So it's just sort of exposure therapy, deliberate practice, or progressive overload that we're leveraging just from a dietary perspective to get you to eat a little bit healthier and better, more nutritious you know, foods. So I love that. And you also mentioned uh, Flavor God, which is asking the question, hey, if I'm good to eat broccoli, how could I make this easier or how could I make this possibly taste good? And well, there's certainly ways of doing that too. And Flavor God is one of those little kind of tools or hacks or, or little tips, tricks that we have to take something that you might otherwise not like and number one, completely change the flavor anytime you want to give you diversity and variety, but then also make it so that it does taste a lot better, heck of a lot better. So that was fantastic too. Love that. Now, one thing I want to also kind of ask you is I remember having a conversation with you and you said, when I first messaged you, you were like, oh, like, I don't know. Do I trust this guy? What, what like, do, do I enjoy what, it, what's going, going on here? So I wanted to ask you that, like, what gave you the trust or the confidence to make the leap and join the program? Because at first you said you were a little, you, you were, whether it was nervous or scared that I wasn't legit or I didn't know what I was doing, or I wasn't going to be able to help you. Or if it was a social proof thing, like, Talk to me about where the skepticism was and what got you over that. For sure. Um, first off, I'd never had a personal trainer before. I always thought of myself as I was a three-sport athlete in high school. I played a little bit of football in college. So I kind of always thought of myself as like, I know what I'm doing. But then I realized like I'm 32, I'm going on 33, and maybe I don't know what I'm doing because I've been stuck <laughs> here for so long. So um I always had resonated with your programs on tonal. I liked the four weeks to fat loss programs, the go big or go home. Like I always thought those were good ones. Um, the, the the jokes. I know everyone talks about the, the jokes. So like when I when I reached out, it's hard to tell. Like when you see someone like through your computer screen or on TV or whatever, you kind of paint a picture of like, are they a real human? Like they're kind of larger than life type of thing. So when I reached out um, and when I first talked to you, I kind of had that skepticism like, does he actually know what he's talking about? Is he just like a paid actor for tonal? Like what's going on? And then getting to talk to you and actually like seeing and then reading reviews and then looking, digging into like your website. And I think when we've had that first conversation, I could realize the way you talked about things. You're not, you weren't just like someone who's paid to like look good in front of like a, a computer screen. You actually know the science behind this stuff. You've done your research on it. Um, I'm a very analytical person. So like, I like to chart things out, write things down. I can tell you you're pretty much the same way with in, in going through the program. I can confirm you're very analytical with how like you draw things up, you design the programs and things like that. So that was huge. Like just for me, just seeing that and then realizing like, you're just another person like me. It's not like this, some like crazy celebrity, like on total, you're just another person like me. Like we've, talked a ton throughout the program we've had tons of conversations like um you know it, it's it's been great like you bring things down to like on a personal level like you give the actual attention that i need or like that clients need um there's a great community we have too with with other clients in the program going to the program as well so like just everything about it um i could tell i went from like skepticism to nervousness to like hey like you know what you're talking about like pretty fast just because like i said you had that really great impression i could tell like i said from our conversation so that was it was great i love that thank you for sharing that and i think it's natural and normal to be a little nervous or to be a little skeptical when you're trying something new and pushing outside your comfort zone just like trying vegetables you know for the first time after a while it's just like pushing into a new exercise or trying to hit a pr or something else it's this excitement and nerves all at the same time. And that's okay. It means that you're getting outside your comfort zone. And oftentimes that could be a good thing. So thank you for sharing that. Now, what were some of the breakthroughs that you had as you went through the program? The aha moments, if there were some, uh, whether that's physically, from a mindset perspective, emotionally, whatever, just what were some of those kind of things that you experienced as you went through this transformation? Um, I mean, we've talked a lot about the eating side of things. So like I, yep. I've had I had some big breakthroughs when it comes to that we talked about, but um, the other part is like working out and mixing in like strength training and like running. Cause I always think of like cardio and running as like 
that's how I'm going to lose the weight. Um, strength training, you kind of think of more as like, maybe you're going to gain weight because you're going to put on muscle. And of course I wanted to put on muscle, but you know, where I was and like my height versus, you know, everything that I just knew I was just too heavy. Um, and you really broke it down with, Hey, like strength training is the best way to do it. Like you can actually go through this whole program if you want to and not do cardio at all and still see the results that you want to and go through it. Um, and I was very skeptical on that to start off with. And I, I had a breakthrough through our first phase. I was doing these workouts and like, I find myself as a, again, a somewhat fit person, even though my weight wasn't where I wanted to be, I did well on the total programs. And that first phase, the first week just kicked my butt. Like, I just can't, like it did. Like I realized like, okay, like, like this is legit. Like I can see why, you know, you can just do this and still lose the weight. And I was like, I went through the first four to eight weeks barely running at all. Like I was maybe running, like I was someone who used to run a hundred miles every single month and I wouldn't really do strength training. So I was running quite a bit, like three, three miles a day usually. Um, and I, I keep track of all my stats, of course, I'm so analytical. And in January, when we first started the program. I think I ran 30 miles, ran slash walked. Cause I was like, at, by the end of these programs, I was like, all right, like I'm just going to walk for like 20 minutes. And, um, but I still lost like 20 pounds in the first month. Like I couldn't believe it. I was just like, holy crap, like this is legit. This is working. So like having that mental breakthrough of like, yes, you can mix these things together, but like strength training is ultimately going to like help you out in the long run. Cause I was putting on muscle. I could tell I was seeing a huge difference in the scale. I was starting to see differences in my um, physique. And then I had another breakthrough um, probably like, halfway through the program um so like you know by the ninth tenth week right around there where i start was able to start integrating some running and i'd sent you a message um and i posted in our group um on facebook that i wanted to try to get back into running because i want to do maybe some 5ks this summer and see how i would do with those and back when i first started the program like i was running maybe like a mile at a time and then i'd have to walk and then run another mile walk and then run another mile. So my 5Ks were taking me probably like 30 to 31 minutes. So not the fastest times. I just was like, hey, I'm one of my off days. I'm just going to try it. I'm just going to try try running the 5K and see how I do. I ran it in like 25 minutes and barely like was breathing hard the whole time. Like I couldn't believe it. And this is coming from I hadn't run more than like one or two miles in two months. And I was just like, hey, I'm just going to just try it and see where we go. And I messaged you and you real you were saying like, yeah, that's what I've been trying to tell you. Like your cardiovascular <laughs> is going to improve with the, the thing. You're going to see huge improvements. And like I was able to, because I was getting in better shape because I was cutting weight, I was able to start doing a little bit more running into it. My off days on the weekends now, like I'm putting, I'm able to put in like five, six miles at a time without really much of an issue. And it's, I'm feeling great about it too. So like those were some big breakthroughs for me, just getting away from like the running is the only thing you can do to improve your like fitness, but lifting can too. Like doing these programs, if you follow like the the steps that you give in the in the um, in the directions, like yeah, it just improved everything overall. That's fantastic. One hundred percent. That's a massive breakthrough. Is getting the appropriate strategy and focusing on the right things can absolutely move the needle big for you. And it's awesome because strength training is the best workout. But what we do is we combine strength training with cardio to give you the best of both worlds. So you're getting both at the same time. And the cool thing is, is that, yes, you'll improve your speed, your power, your endurance. You lose weight. So that obviously makes you lighter, which makes you easier to run. And you improve your cardiovascular fitness. And we've had people that do Ironmans, triathlons, um, 5Ks, all kinds of stuff that have gone through the program. Lots of different runners. And they always improve their times when they go back. It's it's focusing on this for a period of time to improve this weak point. Once you improve that weak point, you can maintain at a much lower intensity level, right? Maintenance, especially with strength, is a lot easier to do than gaining it initially. Then you can integrate the running back in and you're going to see massive improvements and it's incredible. Of course, if you get to bodybuilder level muscle and physique, you're absolutely not going to be a great runner. But 
We're not talking about that. You gained, uh, just to go through the stats again, lost over 40 pounds, uh, cut your body fat to single digit levels. It decreased it by more than half, which was incredible, down to 8.3%. Gained six pounds of muscle during that process and got down to a 32 inch waist. Just incredible, my friend. I mean, I wanna thank you for all your hard work. I wanna thank you for trusting me in the beginning, for investing in yourself. And I wanna thank you for going on this journey not just for yourself, but for your family, for your kids, for your wife, for all your friends, your coworkers, everybody who's got to see it because this journey and what you did, the transformation matters so much more than you think. You have such a large influence on so many people and they all got to see you go through this and now you're leading by example and I just love it. It, it really touches me right here because I know it matters so much and I got to influence with, with my parents, I had my dad who was the, the really positive, who was working all the time and got me into this. And then I had my mom who struggled on the other end and she's no longer here as a result of that. So this journey that you went on really does matter, my friend. And I wanna thank you for that because you're just an incredible inspiration to so many people. That post you made in the Facebook group the other day, the picture with your kids, the before and the after, I, I'm not joking, I teared up reading it. So thank you, it was incredible. Yeah, I want to thank you as well because you, like you said, you take the time. You really do take the effort, like individually. Like every week that I filled out a form, you sent me a video back, whether it was encouragement or whether it was like, "Don't get down on yourself," or like, "Here's this." And it, it really, like, I kind of did the same thing. And the reason I posted that on the the group chat is just because, like, when I saw myself and I would take pictures, like, I was always kind of nervous. Like, I loved posting like pictures of my kids so my family could see them. Didn't really like posting pictures of myself. Um, it's just how I looked. Like I just I wasn't comfortable. Like I had the you know the pudge, the beer gut, like everything, whatever you want to call it. And now like I'm taking pictures. I'm getting tons of compliments. Like people are like noticing. Um, and like you said, for my family, like a good example, my wife's kind of gone through a journey as well where she's lost a ton of weight. Um, like it, we've improved as a household. Like even my parents, like. And, and we've, we've shared a lot of the tips and stuff with them. Um, just, it, it's been life-changing. Like I, I can't even really put into words. It's been, it's been amazing. And I, st I still look at those pictures and I'm just like, I can't believe that it got to that point, but I'm glad that I finally like took the leap to like, Hey, reach out to someone who can actually help out. Um, and I know there's tons and tons of other people that are probably in the same boat. So I would just say like, just do it. Like, just, just do it. Um, if you have the ability, um, dedicate the time, like it, it's, it's always going to be worth it. You're never going to look back and be like, oh man, I, I can't believe I, you know, spent that time working out and getting in better shape. Like, you know, it, it's, it's, it's worth it. And, um, yeah, th thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. As the great Arnold said once, there's no such thing as a self-made man or woman. We all need help. I've had help along the way in my fitness journey, in my health journey. I've had help along with my business journey. I had coaches for acting and all kinds of stuff, on air, audio, everything. We all need help and we need people to not just encourage us, to hold us accountable, but to give us those, those little insights, whether it's a strategy change, or a tip or a trick or something that we don't see because we're the easiest people to fool and we're often our own biggest and worst enemy, ironically. So again, thank you so much. I appreciate you. I don't want to take too much more of your time, but you are amazing, fantastic. And the best part is I know you're just getting started because this isn't the end. It's not a diet program. It's not a workout program. It's a lifestyle change and you've made it, my friend. So thank you again. I appreciate you and keep taking action because as you know, that's the difference between dreaming and succeeding. All right. Thanks, my friend.